box. Well, the Fans manager Irina play. from Puchong United was singing the praises of uh, Christina Pedersen in that last mixed doubles game. But what can we expect out of this game? We have, of course, the former world and Olympic champion, as I keep saying, Marcus Kido up against Yu Hong Kang, who maybe lost yesterday, but I felt that he played quite well. Well, yeah, I think, again, we were talking earlier on about the sort of mix between experience and uh, the younger players. And both on both sides, you have two, uh, let's say, experienced players, both over 30, Marcus Kido over 30, Lee Jae Yin over 30. Um, and then partnering, uh, let's say, uh, younger players that are up and more up and coming are still on the circuit. But for me, the big difference is that on Marcus Kido's side, he's got Afiat, who's also highly ranked in the world uh, and has had quite a tournament pedigree behind him. It seems like Marcus Kido just can't get enough of badminton. We see him every year um, participating in tournaments. Purple League, he always partners with somebody different, usually an Indonesian. And for me, this is a very strong pairing, actually. Uh, both top 100 players, so I feel the uh, Puchong players are really going to be up against it. And Cheras need the points, so 3-0 could gentlemen. not be out of the question for me. On my right, Puchong United BC. Represented by the points are crucial to both pairs from both teams. As Empire, the Empire Juhaida prepares to get this match Omar going. Shiraz BC, presented by Afia Uris Virawan and Marquis Kido. Big support from Marquis Kido. Marquis Marcus Kido to Lee J. J. Love all play. Well, Marcus Kido and Afiat look solid in their performance. Their first round performance in the South Wilgen Ping Purple League. Yeah, they look very comfortable together. Of course, Kido last year played with Agrippina. And they also played on some of the circuit with Agrippina, but now a new partner in the 26 year old Afriat. And that was wild and uncharacteristic from the former World and Olympic champion. Kido just switched the sides so delightfully, but couldn't control it himself. That's called good by the line judge. Afia requesting for a change of shuttle. He's, of course, 26 years of age, and as you mentioned rightly, Donald, quite high-ranked in the world, currently ranked 84. A very reliable partner for the former Olympic champion who puts it away. Yeah, he puts it away there. be a good rally. Marcus Kido sent running. Good defense from him. And now he's on the attack. Incredible defense, incredible play from both sides. Had it not been for the break of string in Lee's racket, rally could have been extended. Marcus Kido was just jumping around at the front of the court, almost, almost like a, a kid. Trying to get to the shuttle. Oh, disappointed when it goes over his head. Great to see that enthusiasm from a veteran player. Still active on the circuit. He's quite agile, isn't he? Able to spring left and right with ease. Powerful, powerful Seven, smash four, from you. Yu Hong Kang, who of course was the world junior champion together with Ao Yao Han. Good play from him. Oh. 
great smash from Afia. Put it in a position that was almost impossible for his opponent to retrieve. And Lee just falling for the keto trap, the soft shot, and very weak lift by Afia. All good. DJ Jin and Yu Hong Kang. Well, down by two. Yu is on serve, and I just feel the chairs have been setting the pace of this game so far. Well put away by Yu. This is now their chance. Chong chance to impress some authority on this game. Well prepared for that flick. Really powered it. Give the way. Puchong pairing have had the chance to attack. They haven't been able to capitalize, and then there's a reversal. Kido getting a little bit of fortune there okay, to take you. the point. Kido so accurate, what he lacks in raw power, he really goes for the precision, tries to find the awkward places for the opponent to play back. Well put away by Five. Lee Jae Jin. Seven. See here he is. Currently 32 years of age. His ranking, of course, dropped to 497 in the world. That was a good smash. Just so deep and powerful. Can almost find any part of the court that at will. Nine, five. Just snatching at that one. That's disappointing from him. Certainly is disappointing. There are not too many unforced errors in this game. Yu Hong Kang, only two. Both players caught stranded. Great defense by Marcus Kido. Very clever. Just let the shuttle come onto his racket and flicked one. I think that's called a lob, isn't it? A lob in soccer. Yeah. Just Play. chipped it. Chips That's the term you would yeah. use in soccer. <laughs> Chipped it over the head. Lee Jae-in. Left stranded. 10-5 with five game points. Only needing the one. Marcus Kido and Afiad showing their quality in this first game. Winning it 11-5. It's been a strong performance, Donald, from the Indonesians. The Puchong pairing not, not being able to cope with the pace. Yeah, the Puchong pairing, they just... You know, everything, I think a couple of key points in the rally, they had the initiative and the chance to attack, but they just couldn't convert those chances into points. And uh, then if we look at the unforced errors, they're slightly ahead of their opponents on unforced errors as well, 3-2. to two. But that's a good example of uh, some really powerful play from the Cheras pairing. And they were caught many times off guard as well as we look at this first game highlights, the Puchong pairing. Yeah, and, and that's a good example of where Kido is very good at finishing off the rally. You see him just punching, 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 finding the weak spot in his opponent, keeping them uh, off balance, and eventually getting the winner. And just see a cute chip over the head of Lee, who was just left stranded. Well, okay, the match statistics so far in the first game. As I said earlier, nothing much in terms of unforced errors, but it's the smash winners that really count. Four of them, to be precise, from Chiras BC's Marcus Kido and Afiat. And we saw Afiat and Kido just, you know, energetically running around, smashing hard in the last game. I wonder if they'll be able to keep that up throughout the rest of this match. One, they don't need to be springing a lot. That is quick error given to them, a gift from Lee Jae Jin. We want to cut down on those. But that, that's the, exactly what you were talking about, Donald. He's springing around and being so aggressive yes. in the front. Just like a little jack-in-the-box 
bouncing in front of the shuttle. He's really eager to get onto it. Well, Marcus Kido, who is usually more accustomed to playing in the backcourt, being quite comfortable in front as well. Oh, that's Great a good play placement. back from Lee. Good placement. One, good technique. Strong wrist is punching it into the corner. Yeah, it looks really easy to do that, but the amount of wrist strength you need to be able to guide that shuttle back with power. It's incredible. Puchong under pressure here. Double stroke from Lee Jae Jin. That is incredible stuff from the Korean. A very brave from him. They were under real pressure and that got them out of jail. Double stroke, off balance. All Kiro could do was just get the racket on it and Lee was straight in there with a follow-up. How much courage does it require to do shots like that when you're playing against the former world number one, the former world and Olympic champion? Lee can take great credit because that just created enough of an opening to get the point and stay in the second game. Kido ready for it. Look at that performance by Kido. It's anticipation superb. We're all struggling to follow where the rally is going, but he already knows. He's straight in with the follow-up. Can play shots from any angle. Great stuff from him. Well, we are witnessing badminton of the highest quality here in the sports arena in Sentosa. That was match day two. Second season of the Resorts World Gunting. Purple League. The overall score right now is six all, as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen. This match could be crucial in determining the winner. But right now, it's Afiat and Marcus Kido who lead 5-3, having taken the first game. Lee now makes two errors to make up for his two winning shots earlier in this uh, game. Eight. It's disappointing from him and he knows it. He's taking a little Three. time to get composed, try to put those mistakes behind him. Such fast hands from both players. Look at the defensive quality from Marcus Kido and that eventually frustrating the Korean who kept attacking it at him. Yes, frustrating the Korean indeed. Walking away as he knows after that smash had failed, he was really on the back foot having to play. What's really Very impressive about, backhand. What's really impressive about that attack? and that defense from Marcus Kido was that he didn't just block the shuttle. It's one thing to be able to block the shuttle at that speed as Marcus Kido could have done, but instead he hits it back with full strength to the back of the court. How much strength does that require both in your wrist and in your arm? Yeah, but also let's not forget the legs as well to have the stability to play off. You need to be, you need to be firmly rooted to the ground. And he's a very compact player. So that's a big benefit when you're playing those reactive type shots. You have to uh, be solid on the ground. Well, in the coaching bench right now for Puchong United BC, we see Christina Pedersen, fresh from her victory a while ago. Just stealing a point, Yu Hong Kang and Lee Jae Jin. Power in the hands of Lee. Five, Can be happy with that one. It's not the hardest of smashes, Lee Jae Jin. Just seems to find the awkward angles. Causing a lot of trouble for his opponents. But so far, Marcus Kido has been equal to most of it. Except on that time. Six, 
6-7. Kuchong are now creeping back here. 6-7. That's encouraging for them. Just sense a bit of the... The pace has gone out of the game, which is suiting them. Well, this time, however, Afyad being the target of the Puchong attack, this is a strategy that seems to be working. That attack worked for them, and that's a, a good variation because the defense of the Cheddar's pairing is extremely solid. So they're not finding a way through with the hard smash, but in the end, the soft drop shot is the one that takes it. Well, then it's a uh, big lead earlier on has been cancelled out by Puchong. It's 7 all. In the second Whoa. game, so we saw one. just Eight. as you say that, Seven. an unfortunate mistake from the Korean. Churas go in front. Well, there's two consecutive Seven. mistakes from Lee Jae-jin. 9-7 now, Churas. Just caught the tape as uh, Afia tried to play that. We'll just put him off slightly. And Puchong will take that benefit. Again, targeting Afia, that seems to be working perfectly. Yes, and finally, something gets through the defense of the Cheras team straight on the backhand. As you say, he seems to be more vulnerable to those attacks. Again, Lee Jae Jin. Oh, yes, Puchong. Pedersen puts her hand to her head. Chance to stay in the match, but it looks now at 10 9 with Cheris on serve. Kido on serve, needing just one more point. Marcus Kido. Well prepared in the front of the court, sees the Churas pairing through 11-9 it is in the second game. Just too quick and too powerful, both players on the Churas team. But just look at him, he seems to be one step He's, ahead. Yeah, everywhere, he's got the anticipation, just springing left and right. Keeping low when his partner's doing the duties and he's quick to move back in position. Well, he was moving to the shuttle even before the shot was hit and that's really incredible speaks a lot about the quality of Marcus Kido 11-5 11-9 as you can see in your screen in just 16 minutes let's take a quick look at the highlights of that second game you yeah, well, one of the things that the Olympic players and players of that caliber have is that they not only have an ability to hit the shuttle but they know exactly what type of shot is going to come back at them uh, after the shot is played, so Marcus will play that shot there. He knows that he's going to get the shuttle back in that position, so he's already moving to where he thinks the shuttle is going to go. 90% of the time he's right, and therefore he's able to score a winning point. This is again, he knows the shuttle will come back across as he pushes through the corner. This is great stuff. We are seeing, as I said earlier, top quality badminton here in the sports arena in Sentosa. Review of the second game summary, of course. Uh, unforced errors, a little bit more this time from the Puchong side of things. Seven unforced errors. But again, smash winners this time. I'm surprised, no smash winners from Churras BC. Third game. I mean, that's Long an indication ball. that they were playing a more Play. sort of flatter, punchy Eight. kind of game with Kido yeah. finishing off a lot of things at the net. Well, third game has just begun. Can Puchong steal something from this? A uh, rare defensive error from Kido pushing that one out. 2-0 no. up. A little bit casual, you could say. Bit of defense. Not he just goes to show that he is vulnerable after all. And 
this time Afia duplicating his partner in that movement. Just so good on the anticipation. But really a push, push shot from Lee, lifting in the middle of the front zone of the court. Not sure he intended that. Shiraz with the attack. Trying to go for something too spectacular, Afiat. A shake of the head from the fans as well. <laughs> it's thrilling stuff though. I really thought that Kido would have finished that off with some great defense from you there. And as you say, Afiat moving across, trying to see the gap, but uh, not able to control it. Lee and you are ahead in this game. Oh, but that is typical of the Indonesians, isn't it? That flag yes. when you play. Yes. It's almost akin to Brazil in the football. Absolutely. Well, they have all the shots. And they love that combination of soft and hard, soft and hard. Playing variation with the speed of the shuttle. Well, the score is now 2 all in this third game. Because the Indonesians of Marcus Kido and Afiat have already won the first two games, just needing one more to close this match out. And look at that trickery, unfortunately for him. It goes long. Oh, so what a relief. Long. <laughs> just long. Yeah, it was a, I thought we had the shot of the match in that one. Just set his opponent yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Of course, that is the downside of, uh, the, let's say, the trick shot. They are much more harder to control. So statistically, you're taking a risk every time you play one. I felt that went... Bit to the wide, and this time he executes it on his second attempt. He's not given up the idea yet, Marcus Kido. <laughs> Here we just see, and he beautifully just brings a shuttle, sorry, brings the racket down across the shuttle, put that little bit of spin, which helps get it to ground as well. Incredible shot from Marcus Kido. And that goes long at the back, and the Indonesians are powering in this. Third game, 4-3 the score now. Well, there was another trick shot in that rally from Afia. I think there must be a hidden contest between the two Indonesians as to who can do more tricks. Each of the Indonesians trying to outdo the other. And Marcus Kido hits himself, understandably. Perspiration coming off the Puchong players. Being made to work hard by this team from Cheras. And again, when you so get powerful on the attack. When you get Marcus Kido in that position, there simply is no coming back. It's such a good combination. This is what what we've seen from Kido, he, he has now taken on in his doubles uh, the role more of the setter, the, the front man, and he's constantly looking for a reliable partner, and Afia, he's found one. As they move ahead, 6-5. Well, the Empire is calling Afia, probably has something to do with influencing the line judge, I suspected so. Players, of course, in badminton, not encouraged to, or rather not allowed to influence the line judge by any way of indicating. And again, the attacking one-two combination from the Indonesians just proving far too deadly, too hot to be handled I by think, the Puchong Perry. I think what's so difficult to understand for the viewers at home is how much power of Kido is able to generate in such a small area. He moves so quickly from drop shots and then jumping up again, yeah. you know, that smash appears to be uh, almost innocuous, but the power at which it flew at you, you saw he was struggling to defend it and that gave the chance for Afiat to finish off. 7-5. And now mistake after mistake coming from the Puchong side. That's unforced error number 14. Oh. 
There you go on your screen. The unforced error count is 14 to 9. Most of them coming from the Puchong side. Yu Hong Kang making up for that though this time. He seems in good position to put that one to ground. Kido for once uh, looks to Skyward. He knows it was a pretty poor serve. Well, there's been a series of high serves today we've seen there, Donald, perhaps more than what we usually see in doubles, but all of them usually have not been quite successful. So why do you think they keep using the high serve and it's proven not to be successful? It, well, yeah, it's, um, it's a gamble. It's definitely a gamble. When it pays off, it can be you know, deadly and uh, at crucial points. You, get a, you, know, you can win a point straight away, but as you say, so more often than not, especially in doubles, it's really the basis for pretty firm attack and... Um, even a winning shot from your opponent. So 6-8. Oh. Lee Yu. Seven, oh, that mistake from Kido just draws the Puchong pairing closer. It's like he lost a bit of concentration there. It's now 7-8. Lee to Yu Hong Kang to serve. Oh. Yu just looking bemused after her serve. Okay, so quick onto it. Look at the defense of Marcus Kido. Yes, it's an order of magnitude higher than I believe the Puchong players are used to. They're used to seeing their smashes having damage, but not against the former Olympic champion. Look how solid he is on his feet. You know, he quickly he's able to push that one back straight to where it came from. It's now match point. Three of them to be exact. The first one saved. Right, the first one saved. Can the Puchong pairing find something here to snatch a game back? which will be so vital for their team. And Lee serving to Afiat. No. He's just got it down to one point. The tension is beginning to felt here in the sports arena in Santosa. It's 9-10. Just as we say, the tension rising. Kido takes the opportunity to change the shuttle or ask for a change. No doubt give himself some composure on the return of serve. Well, the 9-10, Lee Jae Jin serving to the former Olympic and world champion, Marcus Kido. Still match point for Cheris. Look at that. What a shot to play. In the most crucial of times, one of the coolest response from Marcus Kido. The quality of the world and Olympic champion being so apparent here. And it is a three straight game victory for Marcus Kido. That last game, however, going to them 11 9. Yeah, it's so fitting that he plays the final shot, which wins the match. And he's still so delighted after all these years, after all these victories, he still gets a kick out of every single winning match. Look at the smile on his face. And for anyone watching at home, that's really perfect execution. Well, it's 11, match point. It's 11 5, 11 9, 11 9. Let's go down courtside where JD is speaking to the players. All right, down here with the winners of the men's doubles for uh, Chiraz BC, a very uh, straight sets win. It's it's pretty strong. So now, right now, I need to ask Marcus. Apa perasaan Marcus bermain hari ini menentang Puchong United di mana season lepas sebelum ini Marcus pernah bermain dengan Puchong United kan? Apa perasaan Marcus? Ya perasaan sih yang gak enak juga, tapi saya main buat Chiraz saja yang semangat aja pokoknya. Beruntung ya bisa menang terus. So Marcus feels it's uh, it's awkward in a way to play against a Pucho United, but also he's uh, he's put all his efforts to actually win this match, and he did it. Now for Afiat, ini adalah kemenangan kemenangan kedua back to back, tiga kosong, right? So how do you feel about your performance today? Apa uh, apa perasaan Afiat dengan persembahan hari ini? Yang pasti senang bisa tiga nol lagi kan uh, buat nambah poin di tim, jadi memperlebar jarak. Sama lawan hari ini emang uh, beda sama yang kemarin. Uh, kemarin kita masih nggak enak-enak, tapi menang kalau yang ini pola gandanya udah udah ada. Jadi kita terus waspada, tekan dari awal, terus ya bisa menang. Congratulations, great match. They were very cautious at the start, but they did it anyway. Three love, great win. Congratulations to Churras BC. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Well.